We all know about black holes, but what about their mysterious twin siblings, white holes? Have you ever even heard about these guys? Do they even exist? And the most important question of them all, are these two actually a big interdimensional portal? Let's find out. A black hole is a creepy space object with an incredibly strong attractive force. Its gravitation is so great that even light cannot escape from it. That's why it seems black to us. They appear when stars at least three times bigger than our sun completely burn out. Turning old, such a star begins to shed layers of gas and decrease in size. Its core shrinks and shrinks until it turns into a small ball with huge pressure inside. And when it can't withstand this pressure anymore, it goes boom, collapsing on itself and becoming a black hole. And yeah, we still have a lot to learn about these guys, but at least we have some rough idea about them. But what about white holes? Why do we hear about them so rarely? And why don't we know anything about them? White holes are theoretical space objects that are basically the opposites of black holes. If black holes eat everything they see, then white holes, on the contrary, don't let anything enter them. By the way, white holes is just a name. To us, they wouldn't actually look white. Imagine traveling in a spaceship. Suddenly, you see something that looks like a typical black hole. It's surrounded by a bright, rotating, massive ring of space dust and gas. But if you continue to watch, you'll see something unusual. This hole will spit out some matter from its center. Something like this is impossible with black holes. Only at this moment will you realize that this is a white hole because visually, they have no difference. Both of these space phenomena have the so-called event horizon, which is something like a boundary. For a black hole, this boundary becomes the point of no return. If you cross it, there's no way back for you. But for a white hole, it's more like an invisible wall you can't get through. It's like an exclusive club for no one. Here's something interesting to think about. Once, a white hole got a huge amount of material from somewhere, somehow. But then, it stopped absorbing this material and started spitting it out. So that means that it spits out remnants of the past. But what exactly is this past? Can a white hole spit out something that once existed and has long disappeared? Can these things somehow affect our world? This thought may be a little worrying, but you can relax. The thing is, we haven't discovered even a single white hole yet. It may be because we have very little actual knowledge about space. In the 20th century, Albert Einstein and his general theory of relativity hit physics like a tsunami. He discovered something incredible, that gravity, as an invisible almighty force, is able to bend space and time. This discovery was a real breakthrough. That's when scientists first suggested the existence of black holes, but it took them more than 40 years to understand these space objects or even prove their existence. Only recently did we receive the first photo of a black hole located in the center of the galaxy M87. You might remember that one. Many people laughed at the fact that it was too blurry, but we really should give scientists more credit. This photo was obtained through international collaboration of space stations and eight ground-based telescopes. So basically, we needed a huge amount of effort and resources to get even small proof of the existence of black holes. No wonder we still haven't discovered their twins. But on the other hand, many scientists now think that white holes may not even exist. For a long time, they were a logical conclusion of the theory of relativity. If black holes exist, why shouldn't white holes appear in the universe? But recently, scientists have begun to question if white holes are even possible. We know how black holes are born, but for a white hole to appear, this whole process needs to be reversed, which doesn't make a lot of sense. We can take an egg and turn it into an omelet, but how do we turn an omelet back into a whole egg? That's not only about food. At first, everything in the universe has some clear, definite shape. And then, over time, it becomes more and more chaotic. This is one of the universe's statistical laws. Moreover, 
it seems like white holes wouldn't be able to exist for a long time. They would throw a lot of their mass and material into space. All this would gather and gather around them until, eventually, a white hole would collapse and form another black hole. What a weird cycle. But this is what this process looks like if you use common sense. But we all know that the universe is way too cool for our small, simple brains. There are so many things in it that don't make any sense, but they still exist. Some physicists are trying to bring white holes back from scientific oblivion. Their main argument begins with the question, what happens with things that enter a black hole? They can't just disappear into nowhere. According to physics, no matter in the universe can simply turn into nothing. It never disappears, it just changes. So what happens inside a black hole? What happens to a black hole itself when its lifespan expires? And how is a white hole born? As you've probably guessed, these questions may all have one answer. The two holes must be interconnected, and they may even be some sort of portal. For this to be true, we need to violate the equations of general relativity. And we know that Einstein's theory has been considered inviolable for years. But here's a fun fact. We did finally challenge it in 2022. Three scientists got the Nobel Prize for proving that Einstein wasn't right about many things. And the universe is way more complicated than we thought. In other words, white holes can really exist. They may be kind of crazy and incomprehensible to us, but their existence is still possible. If they did, how would they work? Well, we have a few ideas. For example, some suggest that a white hole could be a child of a black hole. Over time, a black hole could grow old and become very small. Then, the processes taking place in it would cease to obey common sense. Pure quantum randomness would come into play. Yada yada, particles create some madness and chaos, and boom! A black hole turns into a white hole. Such a white hole would be the size of a tiny particle and weigh about as much as a strand of human hair. It wouldn't have the incredible gravitational mass of its ancestor, but it would have its insides. In other words, this white hole would store everything that the black hole swallowed in its previous life. And sooner or later, it would start spitting this information out. If this theory is true, then one day, white holes may begin to dominate our entire universe. This could happen when all the stars burn out and all the black holes dry up. But that's in the most distant future you can imagine. We're talking about trillions of years in the future here. The universe may not even survive for so long. There's also another option. Maybe our entire universe is the creation of a white hole. Some physicists say that the Big Bang looks suspiciously like the potential behavior of a white hole. Both of them are very similar mathematically, and who knows, maybe they're right. In any case, there are tons of things in our universe we have no idea about, and maybe one day we'll discover the secret of these twins. Let's just hope that they'll turn out to be some cool interdimensional portals. A black hole is an eerie place where those laws of physics we studied at school stop working. If a massive star runs out of its star fuel, it sometimes becomes super dense and buckles under its own weight, collapsing inward and bringing some space-time along. As a result, the gravitational field of this new object gets so strong that nothing can escape it, not even light. That's how a black hole is born. But there's another theory that if there's a space object nothing can escape from, I'm talking about black holes, there must be something into which nothing can enter. And if you support the theory that black holes don't destroy any information, there must be a way for this information to come back out. So, can this something helping information escape be a white hole? So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse, or as a ball that falls to the ground and then bounces up again. In other words, everything that falls in bounces and comes out through the white hole. Another question is how white holes might form. One of the theories speculate that white holes could be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. 
Of course, no one has seen it. But inside a black hole, there's likely to be a long tube that's getting longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back. And then this super long and super narrow tube is getting thicker and wider again. And we've got a white hole on our hands. You must be wondering now what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out. Quantum mechanics states that many things we perceive as continuous are actually granular. Let me give you an example. Light is not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point, it will reach its minimum size, and this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back, giving birth to a white hole. What matter might a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It'd probably be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole, since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. Black holes are known to absorb everything, matter and energy. As for white holes, they would expel them. Plus, black holes have an event horizon. Once you pass it, you can't turn back. As for white holes, they would have a reversed event horizon. It would prevent anything from entering a white hole. There are other mysterious theories about white holes. For example, some people think they don't exist in our universe, but they do exist in another parallel universe. And it gets even better. There might be some kind of door that connects the black holes of our universe and the white holes of another universe. No one knows for sure whether white holes exist. But interestingly, for almost a century, the theory of general relativity predicted the existence of black holes. And still, many people didn't believe they could exist. And look at us now. We even have beautiful photos of black holes. So we're kind of in the same situation with white holes. It's pretty plausible that they do exist, but so far, they haven't been observed yet, and their existence hasn't been proven. But based on the very nature of white holes, assuming they were real, if you decided to travel to one, you wouldn't be able to get too close to it, because it would push your spaceship away, preventing it from entering. Perhaps you would be able to hang out nearby, watching the white hole spitting stuff out, but nothing more. Maybe to travel through a white hole, you'd have to first enter a black hole. This process would be way easier, but much more terrifying, let me tell you. Let's choose a black hole first. Not to waste too much time and fuel, we'll take the closest one to Earth. This medium-sized monster lies about 1,000 light years away. On the scale of the universe, it's just around the corner. More than four times the mass of our sun, it's surrounded by streams of gas. One by one, gassy shreds send out the last flares of light before disappearing inside. There are two stars nearby, one orbiting the powerful space object and the other moving around this inner pair. Scientists think this black hole might be the nearest to Earth. It's also the only star system that contains a black hole visible to the unaided eye. Finally, you reach your destination, the black hole itself. Its gravitational field is so powerful that even light, including X-rays, can't escape it. That's why the center of the black hole is pitch black. It doesn't mean you can't see the hole. This greedy thing consumes all the matter that strays too close, squeezing it into a superheated disk of glowing gas. The black hole also bends light around it, which creates a circular shadow. You approach this chaos of heat and gravity in search of the event horizon. Every black hole has an invisible line in the sand. Cross it and you won't be able to escape, even if you're a beam of light. Beyond the point of no return, the gravity is just too strong. But the big circle in the middle is bigger than the event horizon. Anything that approaches the black hole first goes into orbit around it. Once it happens, there's no way back. Whatever this object is, it'll end up being pulled into the hole. This region before the event horizon is called the photon sphere, and it looks like the black hole's shadow, even though it isn't. If you got there and somehow managed to stay in one piece, you'd be able to see the back of your head. 
the particles of light from your head would orbit around the black hole at immense speeds and come at you from ahead. Unfortunately, you wouldn't manage to pull it off. Once you started your journey towards the center of the black hole, the difference in acceleration between your head and feet would be many thousands of Earth's gravities. You would be spaghettified, but I'll tell you about that a bit later. First, the material gets caught in the black hole's orbit and is squeezed into a razor-thin spinning band. Friction, heat, electric and magnetic forces energize this disk, which makes the material glow intensely. The most massive black holes have such bright bands that they can outshine millions of galaxies. Inside this disk of glowing material, particles rub against one another. It slows them down and sends them straight towards the black hole's event horizon. If this friction didn't exist, the material would be orbiting the black hole for billions of years, like planets circle around their stars. Anyway, you eventually reach the so-called surface of the black hole. You can also call it the event horizon. It's not a real boundary or membrane. And you don't understand you've crossed it right away. It takes you several seconds to realize you won't be able to escape the black hole's clutches anymore. That's because the light, also trapped by the black hole's gravitational pull, is falling in along with you. It's not bright, but it's still there. The longer you fall, the more stretched, head to toe, you become. This process is what's called spaghettification. You also get squeezed around your midsection and the beams of light surrounding you form a glowing band about your waist. The last thing you see is darkness. It feels as if you're landing on a massive, empty, pitch black planet. What happens after that? You tell me. Can it be that you'll just come out of a white hole in another universe? You're dashing through space in your state-of-the-art spaceship. It's the year 3023, and by now people have figured out how to travel at the speed of light. Your equipment works properly and doesn't show anything out of the ordinary. But suddenly, you feel it. An overwhelming pull. You check the region of space you're traveling through and see something that makes your hair stand on end. You're heading straight into the heart of a supermassive black hole. You didn't notice it before because these space monsters have such an immense gravitational pull that even light can't escape their clutches. So they're literally black. What happens next is hard to describe. Time and space are getting warped. You can't understand what's happening to you and your spaceship. Normally, your story would finish here. But for some unfathomable reason, you survive and are spewed with great force in... Actually, you have no idea where you are. But what you do understand is that a black hole wouldn't let you go so easily. So, what on earth is this thing you've just left? Could it be... a white hole? This is a theoretical cosmic region functioning in the opposite way to a black hole. While nothing can escape a black hole, nothing can enter a white hole. You turn around. The white hole, if it really is a white hole, looks exactly like a black one. Your equipment shows that it has a certain mass. It also seems to be spinning. You also spot a faint disk of dust and gas gathered around the event horizon, a bubble boundary separating the insides of the white hole from the rest of the universe. And then... You witness something incredible. A belch. That's when you finally realize you might be the first person to find a real white hole. While the event horizon of a black hole prevents stuff from escaping in white holes, this boundary doesn't let things enter it. And if we assume that black holes don't destroy any information that gets inside, there must be a way for this information to come back out. So can this something helping information escape be a white hole? So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse. Another question is how white holes might form. One of the most popular theories claims that a white hole could be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. No one has seen it, obviously. But inside a black hole, there might be a long tube. It gets longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back. And then this super long and super narrow tube starts getting thicker and wider again. And that's how a white hole is born. But what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out? 
Quantum mechanics states that many things we perceive as continuous are actually granular. For example, let's take light. It's not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So, if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point it will reach its minimum size. And this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back, giving birth to a white hole. What matter might a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It'd probably be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. Black holes are known to absorb everything, matter and energy. As for white holes, they would expel everything, almost like anti-gravity, endlessly ejecting material. To discover a white hole, we probably need to look for a place where matter would be ejected with enormous force and a lot of energy. Space. Dark, lifeless, and quiet, right? Well, apparently, it's not always true. Recently, scientists have detected an eerie echo coming from the main black hole in our galaxy. It has high and low notes and sounds pretty otherworldly. What does it mean? Should we sound the alarm bell, siren, whatever? Sagittarius A star is our own supermassive black hole, sitting right in the center of the Milky Way galaxy where we live. You might know that black holes are the true monsters of our universe, gobbling up everything that is careless enough to come too close. If a massive black star runs out of its star fuel, it sometimes becomes super dense and buckles under its own weight, collapsing inward and bringing space-time along. As a result, the gravitational field of this new thing becomes so strong that nothing can escape it, not even light. And so goes a black hole. We really can't see black holes since they devour everything, even light. But we can still figure out where they're located, all thanks to the existence of accretion disks. Want an explanation? Well, picture a black hole. The starving thing consumes all the matter that strays too close, squeezing it into a superheated disk of glowing gas. The black hole also bends light around it, which creates a circular shadow. That's what I mean. We can't see a black hole itself, but we can see the accretion disk surrounding it. It happens like this. First, the material gets caught in the black hole's orbit and squeezed into a razor-thin spinning band. Friction, heat, electric, and magnetic forces energize this disk, which makes the material glow intensely. The most massive black holes have such bright bands that they can outshine millions of galaxies. Inside this disk of glowing material, particles rub against one another. It slows them down and sends them straight toward the black hole's event horizon. If this friction didn't exist, the material would be orbiting the black hole for billions of years, like planets circling around their stars. Now, let's get back to Sagittarius A star. It's far less luminous than other black holes at the center of galaxies astronomers have observed. It means that, at the moment, our central black hole isn't actively munching on the matter surrounding it. What, is it catching some Zs? The answer is unclear. There's new evidence received by NASA's IXP telescope. It suggests that the seemingly sleeping giant woke up pretty recently, about 200 years ago. Ooh, that is recent. It snacked on gas and all kinds of cosmic debris within its reach. Why did it happen? And what did the black hole do after that? Sagittarius A star is the nearest to a supermassive black hole, just 25,000 light years away from Earth. Its estimated mass is millions of times greater than that of our Sun. It sounds impressive, doesn't it? So, when scientists spotted relatively recent X ray emissions of ginormous clouds of gas in the vicinity of the black hole, they immediately called on the IXP telescope to figure out what it may mean. What intrigued them most was how bright these clouds were. You see, most cosmic clouds, called molecular clouds, are dark and cold, with their X-ray signatures very faint. But that wasn't the case with this finding. Of course, there are a few theories concerning this phenomenon. One of the main explanations for why these giant molecular clouds are shining so bright is that they just echo a long-gone flash of X-ray light. It could mean that our supermassive black hole might not have been that dormant some centuries ago. 
After additional research, astronomers figured out that the X-rays coming from the giant molecular clouds were actually reflected light. And this light must have come from a short-lived and extremely intense flare that was produced either very near or right at Sagittarius A star. And the most likely cause of it is the black hole suddenly consuming a huge chunk of the material surrounding it. It happened around the start of the 19th century. It was most likely a sight to behold. Whirlpools of particles were drawn toward the black hole's event horizon, also known as the point of no return. The black hole started to ingest all this material, which resulted in brilliant bursts of X-ray light and echoes that we managed to translate into sound waves here on Earth. This discovery is crucial for understanding the processes happening to and around our supermassive black hole. We might also figure out what physical processes can potentially awake Sagittarius A star again, even if this period of activity is just temporary. Supermassive black holes are the largest among all black holes out there. Their mass can be hundreds of thousands or even millions to billions of times the mass of our Sun. And two such giants have been recently spotted with the help of the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array of Telescopes, mercifully also known as ALMA. Two gigantic black holes were growing alongside each other not far from the center of the coalescing galaxy. Apparently, these black holes came across each other when their host galaxies collided. One of the black holes is around 200 million times the mass of our Sun, and the other is a bit smaller about 125 million times the mass of our star. They aren't visible directly, but are surrounded by bright clusters of warm glowing gas and stars tucked close by the black hole's gravitational pull. Time will pass, and these black holes will start circling each other, and eventually they will collide, creating one probably even bigger black hole. Interestingly, such immense merges are more typical for distant galaxies. This makes it harder for Earth-based telescopes to see them. But the sensitivity of ALMA helped astronomers observe these bright and compact regions where matter swirls around black holes. Imagine how surprised they were when, instead of one black hole, they saw two of them munching on the dust and gas stirred up by the massive space merger. And if before, experts thought that such galaxy mergers didn't really happen in our neighborhood, this discovery may mean that black hole binaries like this one may be much more common than we previously thought. And if pairs of black holes are so common, it can make it easier for us to study gravitational waves. These waves, also known as ripples in space-time, occur when black holes collide. If we talk about the recently discovered pair of black holes, it might still take them several hundred million years to crash into each other. But by observing their behavior, scientists can figure out how many binary black holes that are about to collide there are in the universe. Also, this may give us more insight into what is going to happen when our home Milky Way galaxy collides with the Andromeda galaxy in about 4.5 billion years. Oh, I can't wait. Now, have you heard that we might be living in a black hole? No, I'm not kidding. Such a scary theory does exist. See for yourself. Black holes pull inside everything they see. But what if one black hole has already engulfed us long ago? Surprisingly, some physicists deem this theory somewhat plausible. For example, Dr. Nikodem Poplovsky, a theoretical physicist from Indiana University, states that everything that a black hole swallows may turn into a new universe inside the hole or on the other side of it. Who knows? Maybe our universe used to be a quite different place until it got pulled into a black hole. The theory of white holes is closely connected with the previous idea. While black holes swallow all the matter so that not even light can escape, white holes are something quite the opposite. These formations are believed to spit out everything that black holes have pulled in. In other words, a white hole is the hypothetical area of space-time that nothing can enter from the outside but light and matter can escape from it. As for a black hole, on the contrary, you can only enter it from the outside, but can't get free afterward. Now really, an object weighing billions of times the mass of our Sun must be easy to find, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, it might not be that simple. Like in the case with a missing black hole. 
But let's travel to the galaxy cluster Abel 2261, hosting a supermassive black hole at its center. Or at least, that's where it's supposed to be. The main problem is this giant space phenomenon is nowhere to be found. Now, supermassive black holes are mega-monsters, churning slowly at the center of their home galaxies. They gather tremendous clouds of gas and dust around them, which makes them swell up to sizes the human mind can't begin to imagine. If a supermassive black hole, like the one that dwells at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy, moved even a little bit closer to our solar system, we'd be doomed. The distance between this huge thing and Earth could be several dozens of light years, and still, it would wreak havoc on our planet. Earth, along with other things making up the solar system, would be tugged into the black hole's orbit and doomed to spin around it for eternity or longer. Hey, who knows, right? So, it's good that such black holes stay away from us at the moment. So, let's see what happened to that runaway supermassive black hole from that gigantic cluster of galaxies around 2.7 billion years away from our planet. Scientists have been looking for it with the help of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and Hubble Space Telescope. But so far, no result. The main problem with finding a black hole is that it's, uh, well, black. And space is, you guessed it, black too. So there's no contrast whatsoever that could help astronomers spot the hole. But scientists haven't given up yet. After all, they have a lot of other technologies to find black holes, small and big, in the vastness of space. Some of these methods involve watching the stars orbiting black holes. Sometimes, it's a faint gravitational wave signal, which is produced when two black holes collide. But the most reliable technique is watching dust and gas falling to their doom. The thing is, black holes are space objects with insane gravity. So, regions of space surrounding them are usually a bit chaotic, gas and dust getting pulled into the bottomless abyss, compressing and heating up. In the process, it releases a flood of X-ray radiation. So, astronomers look for extremely bright X-ray sources in the universe. Chances are, those are the last gasps of giant clumps of material before they disappear into a black hole. Then, why can't scientists find such X-ray signatures left by the black hole in Abel 2261? One of the most mysterious things about its disappearance is that radio telescopes have spotted some signs of massive plumes of superheated material launched at one point within the last 50 million years. These plumes were most likely caused by a large black hole, which is nowhere to be found these days. So, at the moment, we can only play a guessing game. Maybe two medium-sized black holes collided, pushing the newly merged giant out of the center of the galaxy. The observations of the stars in that galaxy have shown a clump of dense material a few thousand light-years away from the galaxy's core. Maybe it's the runaway black hole. But disappointingly, no X-ray signals are coming from that clump. Or the hole might still be there in its rightful place. But it's, you know, slumbering. If it doesn't get a fresh supply of gas and dust, it has nothing to feed on. As a result, it can't release a flood of x-rays. But again, the answer, do not disturb, the black hole is sleeping now, isn't very satisfying. Why isn't it getting its space food? What happened 50 million years ago? What is that clump of material speeding away from the galaxy center? So many questions, and no answers so far. At least, we know what black holes look like. Well, kind of. It's actually the shadow of a black hole's event horizon, visible against the glowing superheated material falling inside the hole. The first ever mugshot of a black hole appeared in 2019. But the data for its creation was collected in 2017. It took an international team, consisting of more than 200 astronomers, two years to assemble the image. We can admire this amazing space phenomenon thanks to a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Why such a name? The thing is that the Event Horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example, matter, radiation, or light, reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape the black hole's clutches. Anyway, to capture that very first image of a black hole, scientists created a virtual telescope 
that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight powerful radio telescopes. But it wasn't an easy feat. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. Plus, to keep the chances of rain and bad weather to a minimum, they even constructed the telescopes in super dry regions, such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the South Pole. On each observation day, the telescope gathers roughly 350 terabytes of data. That's 10 times the amount of data collected every day at the Large Hadron Collider. But let's speak more about black holes themselves. There are stellar black holes, smaller but even more dangerous than their supermassive peers. They appear when stars that have run out of their star food fall into themselves. If a star used to be big enough, it keeps compressing and compressing some more, and voila! A baby stellar black hole is born. But even if I call such a hole a small one, it's still five to several tens of times heavier than the Sun. Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand SUVs. One theory claims tons of micro black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple mini black holes pass through our planet every day. There is a supermassive black hole smack dab in the middle of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Its name is Sagittarius A star, and it's 4.3 million times as heavy as the Sun. And nope, we aren't going to be pulled into this hole. It's more than 26,000 light years from Earth, too far to have any influence on our planet. By the way, recently, astronomers have discovered that this supermassive black hole might be leaking. If it's true, it probably means that Sagittarius A star isn't a sleeping giant, as previously thought. It might still be active. And the leakage recorded by scientists may be the hole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. Maybe we should burp this baby? If you ever find yourself near a black hole, hmm get ready that time will significantly slow down. It may work for you if you aren't eager to grow older. Just don't let yourself be tugged beyond the point of no return. Another danger of hanging around a black hole is that it might start behaving like a massive galactic volcano. From time to time, black holes flare up. But instead of spewing lava, they produce enormous amounts of energy. And it makes gaping holes in the surrounding material and gas. A short time ago, scientists discovered one of the largest craters in the universe. Radio and X-ray telescopes detected a supermassive black hole that threw a temper tantrum many, many years ago. It happened in a galaxy cluster about 390 million light years away from Earth. The crater left behind, which was actually a hole punched in the cluster's hot gas, could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies. Okay, mind blown, I'm out of here. Imagine a being so powerful it can suck in entire galaxies, so mysterious it's invisible to the naked eye, and so impressive it bends the very fabric of space and time to its will. Yes, meet my mother. Nah, yeah, just kidding. Actually, meet the ultimate superhero of the universe, the black hole star. What is it, and how does it work? Well, let's find out. The universe is full of marvels, and the black hole star is one of the most impressive ones. It's a supermassive force that can bend the laws of physics, and a true enigma for scientists to unravel. No wonder science fiction writers find them so captivating. A black hole star, also known as a quasi-star, is a hypothetical type of extremely massive and luminous star that may have existed early in the history of the galaxy. They're predicted to be as luminous as a small galaxy. But unlike modern stars, they weren't powered by nuclear fusion in their cores. A quasi-star's energy would come from material falling into a black hole at its core. And yes, just like a normal black hole, these stars have the power to suck in anything and everything that gets too close, including stars, dust, and even entire galaxies. But how is it possible that the star is born from a black hole? And what's more, how do they continue to coexist together? Well, first let's discuss how black holes are born in general. It all starts with a supermassive star, 
one that is at least a few times more massive than our own sun. This giant of a star burns bright and hot, shining with the light of a million suns. But eventually, it runs out of fuel and its fate is sealed. As its lifespan comes to an end, it makes one final massive boom. A blast so powerful it can outshine an entire galaxy. This blast is called supernova. During this boom, the outer layers of the star fly away, while the core gets squished together by its own gravity. If the squished core is heavy enough, it can keep squishing until it becomes a black hole. And just like that, a black hole is born. Don't even try to put diapers on this thing. Now, this cosmic monster baby can continue to grow by swallowing up anything that comes too close, including stars, dust, and even entire galaxies. This is basically what's happening now in our universe with supermassive stars. But what about quasi-stars? The formation of a quasi-star could only happen early in the development of the universe, before hydrogen and helium were contaminated by heavier elements. And because of that, quasi-stars have one important feature. They are gigantic, so enormous, that it's literally impossible to imagine. They may have been dwarfing even the largest known modern stars, like V.Y. Canis Majoris and Stevenson 218. No wonder they're so scary. They were born from protostars, one of the first stars in the universe. The great-great-grandfathers of, you know, everything. So now, imagine a protostar so massive that its core collapses into a black hole, just like we described before. But the key difference is that in a regular supernova, the outer layers of the star are blown away by the energy released during the boom. Meanwhile, in a quasi-star, these outer layers are massive enough to absorb the energy without being blown away. What do we get in the end? A star with a black hole in its core that weighs from 1,000 to 10,000 solar masses. This quasi-star is about 14,000 times bigger than our Sun, which makes them bigger than any star we know today. These celestial titans have some pretty crazy properties. Once a black hole is formed at the center of a giant protostar, it starts to give off a ton of energy. This energy helps to balance out the force of gravity, making it kind of a giant fusion-based star. They would be so bright that each one would look like a small galaxy. Quasi-stars would have a pretty short lifespan, around 7 million years. Just for comparison, our Sun is about 4.5 billion years old and it's only halfway through its lifetime. But either way, during this short period, the black hole at the center would grow to be about 1,000 to 10,000 times the size of our Sun. Quasi-stars are also thought to be super hot, with temperatures reaching over 17,500 degrees. But as a quasi-star gets older, it starts to cool down, and its outer layers become see-through. Eventually, it cools down to a temperature of 6,740 degrees. And at that point, it's curtains for the quasi-star. It can't survive at that temperature. So it just dissipates, leaving behind an intermediate mass black hole. Unfortunately, right now, there's no observational evidence for the existence of quasi-stars. This is because they're thought to have only existed a very, very long time ago. They may have been very massive population 3 stars, which are extremely rare and difficult to detect. It's also very unlikely that any of them would still exist today because of their super short lifespan – only 7 million years. So why do scientists believe that quasi-stars could have existed? Because they're looking for ways to explain how supermassive black holes formed so early in the history of the universe. They're found at the center of most galaxies. But how could these monsters have formed so quickly? After all, it takes a really long time for small black holes to grow into supermassive ones. This is where the idea of quasi-stars come in. These stars aren't just destructive forces of nature. Mm. They're like the black belts in the martial art of gravity. They can bend and twist anything to its will. That's why these stars, if they really existed, had to play a crucial role in the evolution of galaxies. They must have been instrumental in shaping the universe as we know it. So those intermediate-sized black holes that they left behind could eventually turn into supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies. But we're still yet to solve this cosmic mystery. 
detection and study of black hole stars is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Only instead of a needle, it's an invisible and mysterious object. And instead of a haystack, it's the vast expanse of space. But with the help of some pretty cool technology and a lot of brain power, scientists are getting closer to uncovering the secrets of these celestial giants. Here are some things that can help us in this research. First of all, gravitational waves. They're like ripples in the fabric of space-time, caused by the movement of massive objects. Albert Einstein predicted them way back in the 20th century, but they were finally detected only in 2015. We caught them by observing the collision of two black holes. This discovery confirmed that black holes can merge and that they're a powerful source of gravitational waves. Scientists think that by studying these waves, they can learn more about how black holes form and grow. We can also try to detect quasi-stars by observing the effects of their gravity on nearby objects. It's like trying to spot a criminal by their fingerprints. For example, if a black hole is located near a star, scientists can observe the star's light being distorted as it's pulled toward the black hole. And, of course, we can use our technologies, such as X-ray, infrared, and radio telescopes. This allows us to study black holes in various ways and at different stages of their lives. In other words, scientists are working hard to uncover the secrets of these celestial giants. We develop new telescopes, search for primordial black holes, and try to understand the connection between black hole stars and dark matter. And we're making some pretty incredible discoveries, just like with gravitational waves. All these things will bring us closer to uncovering the secrets of quasi-stars. And when we find out the truth about them, it will become a new page in our scientific history. Ever wondered what it would be like to hear the sound of a black hole? Huh, NASA's got you covered. Here is a screaming black hole. Screaming in space? Huh, I thought in space no one can hear you scream. Well, let me explain. Using a telescope, NASA examined the movements of hot gas in a cluster of galaxies in 2002. Then they converted what they found into a sonification. The sound, mm, how can I put it politely, wasn't appealing, but that's okay. After all, you're able to hear the noise hot gas produces in a cluster of galaxies 250 million light years away. Hey, how would you like to hear the sound gas produces right here on Earth? Yeah, never mind. Sound waves already existed over there in the gas cluster, so experts just rescaled them to the range of human hearing. This is how they converted the input coming from the telescope. The principle is universal. In our atmosphere, we can hear stuff because pressure waves move through a medium like liquid or gas. Sound waves in these galaxies can also move because they're surrounded by gas. What does it have to do with black holes? Well, the thing triggering those pressure waves in the cluster is a giant black hole. To be more precise, it's a supermassive black hole that weighs millions of times more than the Sun. Wow! Experts still don't fully understand the relationship between supermassive black holes and the clusters surrounding them. They only know that these two evolve together, they're interrelated. The cluster feeds the black hole with new material and so on. And in return, the black hole heats the cluster. That's all we know. Now, this made me wonder how large the biggest black holes are. There are four types of black holes – stellar, intermediate, supermassive, and miniature. Naturally, the biggest ones fall into the category of supermassive. The largest black hole in the universe, we've discovered so far, is about 66 billion times larger than the Sun. It's one of the brightest objects in the universe. Astronomers keep scanning space and finding new black holes. But have you wondered when the first black hole was spotted? It was discovered by different researchers independently in 1971. Scientists first confirmed that these objects were formed from the remnants of massive stars. After a black hole appeared, it then consumed all the nearby objects. Here is a quick recap of how these space objects work. Their gravitational force is super strong. Nothing can escape a black hole after crossing the event horizon. Black holes eat everything, hey, just like me. <laughs> I mean, even light gets trapped inside them. What's even cooler slash scarier is that the laws of time and space become distorted there. If you were falling into a black hole, you would realize that time slows down there. Einstein explains this in his famous general relativity theory. 
In very, very basic terms, time gets affected by how fast you are moving at extreme speeds. NASA has discovered a rapidly growing black hole. But don't worry, the world isn't in danger. This black hole has been in front of the eyes of astronomers this whole time. It's in a region of a well-studied sky field. Astronomers say that this hole formed 750 million years after the Big Bang. You know, the birth of our universe. So why are black holes so bright? Well, that's a bit ironic. When I defined the space phenomenon, I said that black holes were so dense that even light got trapped there. But ask any astrophysicist, and they'll confirm that black holes are among the brightest objects in space. That's because black holes don't exist alone. They sit at the centers of galaxies and are usually surrounded by clouds of hot gas. And these clouds create cosmic auroras around black holes. I must mention, though, that you can't see a black hole directly. What you see is actually the effects it has on its environment. For instance, you can see space objects being ripped apart by a black hole. Remember when the first time ever silhouette image of a black hole was shared with the public in 2019? Proof, you fellas! You wouldn't really see the black hole if there was no orange ring. Why is the ring orange and not green or purple? The dark shadow inside is the shadow of the black hole. The glowing orange of the bright ring in the image isn't the real hue of the gas. I'm a little heartbroken here. It's a representation picked by researchers to depict the brightness of the emissions. A scientist explained that yellow is the most intense emission, red is less intense, and black has little or no emission at all. In the optical range, this ring would likely seem white, perhaps tinged with blue or red. Now, spaghettification is a real word. That's an astonishing ability black holes have. If a giraffe fell into a black hole, it would stretch into a long, spaghetti-like strand. On Earth, the giraffe's legs are closer to the center of Earth, so they're more powerfully attracted to the surface than the animal's head. This rule works in the animal's favor on Earth, but would work against it inside a black hole. In a black hole, there's extreme gravity. The closer the giraffe's legs got to the center of the black hole, the more the pull of gravity would stretch them. And the closer to the center the giraffe got, the faster its legs would move. But the top half of the giraffe's body would be farther away, so it wouldn't move toward the center as fast as the legs. Here comes the spaghettification. Can we have meatballs with that? No? Okay. The only difference between a black hole and our sun is that the center of the hole is made of super-dense material. It provides the black hole with a strong gravitational field that can trap everything, including light. This is why we can't see black holes. Did you know that, theoretically, you could turn anything into a black hole? For instance, if you shrank the sun to approximately 4 miles across, you would compress the matter inside to an extremely small size. This would make it so dense that our star would turn into a black hole. You could do the same with a planet or even your own body. Is there something called a white hole, or is it just a myth? White holes exist, in theory. Hypothetically, they function in the opposite way to black holes. Nothing can enter them. Physicists think of black and white holes as yin and yang, or two sides of the same coin. For them, a white hole looks exactly like a black hole, which makes different things come out of it. But the existence of white holes hasn't been proven yet. And how about wormholes? There are so many movies about black holes and wormholes. How many of them are based on reality, and how much is fiction? Some people believe that black holes function like wormholes. You go inside and exit in another part of the universe. Since we still have a lot to learn and discover about physics, no one can prove this theory is wrong or right. Astrophysics says we need to have a solid theory that unifies general relativity with quantum mechanics. Black holes are among the largest structures in the universe, but there might be tiny specimens. The mass of the smallest black hole we know about is only three times greater than that of our sun. Now, apparently, black holes can vanish. Stephen Hawking developed a theory of Hawking radiation. According to it, radiation decreases the mass and rotational energy of black holes, and ultimately, they evaporate. This process occurs very slowly, though if we're not talking about small black holes. Astronomers have discovered an elusive black hole in the neighboring galaxy. 
What makes this one special is the fact that it's the first dormant stellar black hole outside of our galaxy. This type of black hole is hard to observe because such holes don't interact much with their environment. They don't emit as much radiation as other black holes. Well, back on Earth, what about sinkholes? Well, different physics. Yet, if you cross the event horizon, your whole car can disappear. Whoops! Black holes are like omnivores. They'll eat anything in their way if it gets close enough, including planets, stars, clouds of gas, or some very unfortunate intergalactic travelers. Not that it really gets hungry and goes after space objects. It simply swallows whatever comes nearby. It stretches giant space bodies until they're thin, like spaghetti, and rips them apart atom by atom. A black hole is a huge amount of matter that comes in a very small package. It's like you squeeze a star 10 times bigger and more massive than the sun into a small area with the diameter of New York City. You get an extremely massive, compact, and dense pit with gravity so strong, not even light can escape. Not even another black hole. They don't have a fixed point in space. Stars, planets, asteroids, comets, black holes, and everything in the universe is in constant motion. That's why things get so chaotic from time to time. Researchers found a giant black hole at the heart of one galaxy being eaten by an even bigger one. A black hole can get extremely big. At the centers of most giant galaxies are black holes that can grow millions to billions of times the mass of our sun. One of the ways to become so big is by eating others of its kind. A black hole merging with another black hole is one of the most energetic and powerful things in the universe. Picture this. 1.3 billion years ago, two black holes are circling around each other. The bigger one pulls the smaller black hole inwards, and now they're locked together in a spiral. Through time, that orbit starts decaying, but very, very slowly. These two black holes are constantly getting closer and closer. As they approach one another, the disks of orbiting dust and gases that surround them mix and create an intense towering vortex. It extends and goes pretty high above the center of that disk. At some point, they finally merge into one extra big, supermassive black hole. As they're merging, they kick out gravitational waves. These waves tell us a lot about black holes, but they can't reveal their precise position. So, scientists need some electromagnetic signal that will find the black hole's location, like radio waves, x-rays, or a flash of light. We can't see black holes, but we can detect their effect on space objects that are surrounding them. When a black hole passes through a cloud of matter, its strong gravity will pull matter inward. If a star or a planet comes close enough, the same will happen. The attracted matter then accelerates, which means starts to move very quickly and heats up. The black hole then starts emitting X-rays that radiate in the area surrounding it. The energy of X-rays affects the neighborhood and can, for example, spur the growth of new stars. And finally, BAM! They collide! It's a massive burst of energy, one of the biggest bangs ever since the Big Bang. In less than a second, that collision emitted more energy than all of the stars in the visible universe together at the same time. Black holes can become huge, but not necessarily. Stellar mass black holes have a mass similar to the sun, and they can be very small. The one scientists found in 2019 is located 10,000 light years away from us and is only 12 miles across. They really have a reputation for destruction, but black holes are just another source of gravitational force, similar to stars. That means it's possible for a space body to orbit them, if it moves fast enough, of course. Let's say there's a black hole with the same mass as the sun. The speed a space body would have to move at is the same as the one needed to orbit our sun, if the distance is the same. That's a theory. In reality, planets don't really orbit black holes because those that have a mass similar to our parent star are mostly the remnants of giant stars that ran out of nuclear fuel and eventually exploded. 
That's how black holes are created in the first place. And chances are that none of those planets nearby will survive it. But 30 years ago, scientists discovered the first planets beyond our solar system. These planets were found orbiting a pulsar, which is also some sort of supernova remnant. We don't know how they survived the explosion of their parent star. It's possible they may have been created after the destruction from debris that formed after the explosion. Scientists even have a theory that black holes are possibly wormholes, something like tunnels to other galaxies. That means they don't destroy objects they swallow, but send them somewhere. The theory says the object that enters and then goes out on the other side leaves the tunnel through something opposite of the black hole, a white hole. It probably looks similar to its companion, with all that spinning and similar mass. There could be a ring of gas and dust around the event horizon. The event horizon is the point of no return, the part of a black hole where nothing escapes. Unlike a black hole, a white hole lets light and all the matter leave, but none of that will be able to enter the portal once again. About 50 years ago, Stephen Hawking realized that black holes leak energy. Scientists then developed the theory that a white hole could be born out of a black hole. They're still not sure how the black hole disappears, but in this scenario, it would grow so small, it no longer can have such strong gravity that makes it swallow other objects. So, it might turn into a white hole then. Such a hole would be similar in mass to something really light, like human hair. It wouldn't be so dramatic as its black hole ancestor, but it would still hide mysteries in its interior, the information of all space objects it had swallowed previously. It would eventually spit out that information and get so big, it would dominate the universe. White hole behavior, opposite of black holes and all that sucking the matter inward, could be compared to the Big Bang explosion, where the universe is expanding and new objects are forming. But even if something like this happens, it may only be possible trillions of years from now. And there's an issue. Even if some big white holes did form somewhere in space, they probably wouldn't last too long. Outgoing objects would collide with the matter in orbit, so the whole system would collapse and turn into a black hole once again, since they're also formed after supernova explosions. Stars, asteroids, comets, galaxies, and planets, all those space things we can see, make up nearly 5% of the universe. About 25% could be dark matter, a mysterious substance we can't actually see, but assume it's there because everything in the universe moves to its gravitational tune. This dark matter is kind of like a spider's web. It holds all those galaxies that move pretty fast together. Its evil twin is called antimatter. Antimatter particles are like the opposite version of the matter, the same mass but opposite electric charge. When they collide, antimatter wipes out the regular matter, and the result is pure energy. Dark matter probably makes the universe expand even faster than it used to do. One of the latest theories says it could be responsible for the huge asteroid strike that made the dinosaurs go extinct, too. The universe doesn't have a center, but galaxies do. The Earth makes a circle around the center of the Milky Way once every 250 million years. This orbit is not straightforward, but we can roughly predict it. Once in every 60 million years, we go through the crowded region of our galaxy, known as the galactic disk. At the same time, we can track some harsh mass extinctions in the history of our planet, including the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs about 66 million years ago. Professor Rampino from New York University proposes that dark matter has a gravity that could throw nearby space bodies into the Earth's path whenever we enter the galactic disk. That means some asteroids and comets that would usually be far away from us are flung towards our planet. The biggest thing in the universe, at least the one we know about, is the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall. It's a cluster of galaxies 10 billion light years across, bound together by gravitational force. The biggest elliptical galaxy is IC1101 and has a diameter of 4 million light years. The smallest galaxy, Segway 2, we've discovered so far, has a diameter of a little bit over 220 light years. It's pretty faint and has only 1,000 stars. For comparison, our galaxy has 100,000 million stars. It orbits the Milky Way.